In this video, I'm going to be going over a fairly important topic for factoring, and it gets a little bit away from what we're used to seeing in terms of greatest common factor and factoring by grouping, and it definitely requires your understanding of positive and negative numbers when adding or multiplying and these sorts of things. Hi, my name is Mr. Brash. I teach mathematics, and I've been doing these videos for a little while now, and I hope that you enjoy them. Give me a like if you like it, give me a dislike if you don't, leave some comments there, and hey, why not subscribe to my channel? Okay, so we're going to need to define a few things here first. So first of all, what's a quadratic? What is that? We might not have heard of that. And also, what is a monic trinomial? So there's a few things going on here. And I have a little side note over here we'll talk about in a second. So let's start with some definitions. So a trinomial, which means an item that has three terms, an algebraic expression with three terms, if it is in this form where we have an x squared, we call that a quadratic, and that is because of the x squared portion. Don't forget that squares have four sides, and so that's where the word quad comes from because of this idea that all four sides being the same length, the area of that shape, if we were to have air side lengths of x, the area of that shape would be x squared. And so that x squared being the area is where we get the term quadratic. Okay, now what does it mean when I say a equals one? Well, a monic trinomial is when we have this format of a times x squared plus b times x plus c. Now, a, B, and C would be numbers. We're going to see examples, don't you worry. And a monic trinomial is just when that A value is a 1. So if we don't see a number in front of X squared and we have something like this, this is a trinomial. It is also a quadratic and is considered monic because the A value here is a 1. There's no other value in front of that X squared. So hopefully these definitions stick and they make sense and obviously you can look them up on other videos and on the internet and this sort of thing. So we're going to really quickly just practice our expansion here and we have a binomial with x plus a and another binomial with x plus b and we're going to see what we get when we multiply that out. So we're just going to remind ourselves x times x is x squared, x times b, or you might even do a times x first, that's kind of sort of up to you and we would do the x times the b and we would do the a times the b. Okay. And so we can, if we want to, collect these like terms, which we would normally do. Now an a plus a b, these aren't numbers. So I'm just going to write a plus b. We, we can definitely combine these like terms for my x. It's just right now they're not actually numbers and we don't know what a times b is. This pattern is really important and we're going to be using this pattern to help us solve things like this. If we were to try and factor x squared plus 11x plus 24 with the skills that we currently have, we'd be looking for some sort of GCF. And so we'd, we'd ask ourselves, is there a GCF in this question? Now, right now there's not. None of these three terms have a GCF. And we can't factor this by grouping. If I were to take an x out of the first two terms and get my x plus 11, I would have a plus 24 just sitting on the end. In the grouping that we've been doing, we've always had four terms where I could try to find a common factor between a pair on the left and a pair on the right and then factor that common factor out and it's, it's really not working right now. So what can we do? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to look for this pattern that we created up here with the A's and B's and essentially we're going to create a grouping for ourselves. I'm gonna explain this in two different ways today. So first and foremost, let's just practice this by expanding and then factoring to see how this works. So we're going to expand this out. x times x is x squared, x times negative 4, 3 times x, and 3 times negative 4. Now before I combine these like terms, let's take a quick look at this. I'm going to be adding 3 to negative 4. I want to write this down somewhere, so I'm going to be adding 3 to negative 4. And then the 12, this negative 12 came from multiplying the 3 times the 4. Very specifically, negative 4 to get negative 12. So I'm going to be adding a 3 and a negative 4 to get negative 1, and I multiply the 3 times a negative 4 to get negative 12. This is really important. This is what's going to create this trinomial for me right here. But what if I wasn't given 
any expansion to do. And I wasn't given this as a question. I was actually asked to factor this. So the question may have said to factor this monic trinomial. So it's monic again because there's a one there. Our job would be to come up with a way to break apart this negative one x here into two terms that add to negative one, but that those same two numbers multiply to make negative 12. So let's see that in practice. Let's work backwards. We're kind of cheating here because we already know the negative one come from, came from a negative four and a three. So let's split that up again. We're just going to break it into its pieces of the negative four x and the three x. And now let's factor by grouping. Let's group the left hand to the x squared and the negative four x. I'll take an x out. And let's factor the right hand to, they have a common factor of three. So I'm gonna factor a three out. I end up with x plus four as a common factor among both of these things. And what I'm left with is x plus three. So I'll actually write that one first. And we'll see that that matches the question that we started with when we were asked to expand this. So what we're going to be doing is we're gonna be doing a trick. We're gonna be coming up with a sum or two numbers that add to a particular number and a product or two numbers that multiply to a particular number. We're going to be looking for the sum that comes to the middle term here or the B and a product that comes to the C at the end here. So let's practice this a few times. Okay. Let's focus on the left-hand one here. I've been asked to factor this trinomial. There's no GCF. I can't factor it by grouping. So my goal here is to break up that five into two items that I can add together. And those same two items are gonna multiply to make six. But what we learned in, up, up above is that there's a little pattern that we can do. We're gonna look for the two numbers that produce six or that multiply to make six and that sum to five or add to five. And there's a few different ways you can write this for yourself. A few people have been taught the cross method. There's something called the box method. There's all sorts of different ways that you can do this. But essentially what we're trying to get at here is we're trying to get at what two numbers can I throw together so that I can factor this by grouping. And eventually, I don't have to factor by grouping at all. I'm just gonna be able to do it. I'll just be able to throw down the factorization in one step. So here's how I like to do it. I'm gonna grab a little scrap area here. I'm just gonna say I need the factors of six. So I need to write down what the factors of six are. And I know that there's one times six and two times three. And those factors have to add to five. Okay, so one and six don't add to five, but two and three, they add to five. Now, before I write those down in here, I wanna show you how easy it is to go from here to the final step. I'm going to write x and x, and then what goes in the bracket here are the two and the three. So we're gonna have a positive two and a positive three. Now let's watch how that works in, in general here, just in practice. I'm just gonna make some room for myself. And now let's throw the two here and the three here and see how this works when we do the factoring by grouping. So I'll factor in x out of the first two terms and I'll factor a three out of the next two terms. I get x plus two, which is common in both, and I get x plus three that's left over, which is exactly what I said I would have when I finished. Okay, so what I can do, and I can, I, we're gonna do this again a couple times here, we can find two numbers that produce six or multiply to make six and sum or add up to the middle number here. And let's do this here on the right hand side so that we have a model to work with on the left hand side to complete this question on the right. So we've been asked to factor this trinomial. It is a monic trinomial. Always kind of have to check for that. There's no GCF, which is really the first thing you should always look for when factoring. And we're gonna try and break the negative 13 up but I really wanna skip this factoring by grouping portion. I just wanna go right to the answer. I really just want two brackets here. I wanna figure out what those are. So I'm gonna grab some scrap space here and I'm gonna say I need the factors of 36. And you get pretty fast at this after a while. And you also need these factors to add specifically to a negative 13. All right, the factors of 36. One and 36 are not gonna to add to negative 13. Two and 18 
not going to add to negative 13. 4 and 9. 4 and 9 could certainly add up to 13. How do I get them to multiply to a positive but add to a negative? If they are both negative, if I have a negative 4 times negative 9, that's positive 36. And if I add negative 4 and negative 9, I get negative 13. And so this is my answer right here. I have an x minus a 4 and an x minus a 9. And if you're not sure about that and you want to check it, you could just mentally expand this back out. You're going to end up with negative 4x and negative 9x. That adds to negative 13. And you're going to end up multiplying negative 4 times negative 9, which is positive 36. Now, if you like factoring it by grouping and writing it all out, by all means, go ahead and write it all out. But at some point, you're really going to want to just write the final answer because it's so much faster. And this method is called the product and sum method. So let's try that again. We're going to try it two more times. Here we have another monic trinomial. We're going to try and jump straight to a final answer. So I need the factors of negative 72. Maybe I'll do that down here. So I need the factors of negative 72 that add up to a negative 1. This is a negative 1 inside here. Now, as with any other video, if you've watched any of my other videos or other videos on YouTube, it's highly recommended that you pause the video and try this for yourself. So give it a, give it a shot before I go ahead and give the answer here. But we need two values that multiply to negative 72 and add to a negative 1. Can you figure out what those factors are? So the factors of 72, there's quite a few of them. And if you know what you're doing, you can sort of skip some of them in order to make your life a little bit easier. And the answer for us happens to be 8 and 9. Now, I have to just triple check my positivity and negativity here. 8 minus 9 will give me a negative 1. And 8 times negative 9 will give me negative 72. All right, so I can say x plus 8 and x minus 9. And you can triple check your answer by sort of mentally expanding this out and understanding you'll have an 8x and a negative 9x, which will add to negative 1, and an 8 times 9, which is 72. Positive times negative is negative. And our final example here, we've been asked to factor fully this algebraic expression. And whenever you're asked to factor fully, that's a huge hint. It's a hint that there's going to be multiple steps. As with any factoring question, you should really look for a GCF first. And I see a GCF among these three terms. The GCF is 3y. So I will factor out a 3y from each of these terms, and I'll be left with y squared minus 7y minus 8. And what that leaves me with inside the bracket here is a monic trinomial, which means I really should try and factor that monic trinomial inside this bracket. And it's a huge hint that they said factor fully. So we're going to look for two numbers that multiply to make negative 8, and they add to make negative 7. And the factors of 8 are pretty simple, 1 and 8, 2 and 4. Now one of these adds to 7, specifically it's the first one. 1 minus 8 is negative 7. 1 times negative 8 is negative 8. So our trinomial here becomes two binomials. We've got a y plus 1 and a y minus 8. I could have written them in the other order. Any of these answers can be written the other order. It doesn't matter. This could be an x minus 9, x plus 8. But the location of the positives and negatives does, in fact, matter. And so now we are factored fully for this scenario. And if you need to check your answer on scrap paper or even mentally, you would expand this back out to see if you get the statement that we started the question with. So this skill of factoring monic trinomials, specifically monic quadratic trinomials, is going to be crucial moving forward when you start to look for things on a graph of a quadratic. Now, some of you might not know what a quadratic actually looks like, but on a Cartesian plane, a quadratic is a parabola, something that looks a little bit like this. And we're going to be using this factoring tool to help us find this, these two special locations where my graph crosses the x-axis. And these are called the zeros or the roots. And we're going to be finding these factors to help us do that. So this is why this is important moving forward. OK, you're going to need to practice this skill for sure. So take a chance on some questions. Look around the internet. Find some other videos. Maybe leave a comment or ask me a question. And keep practicing math.